Alright, looks like Facebook come up, waiting on Periscope to pop up. That traffic was rough, but I made it. There's Periscope. Alright. Well, good afternoon. Prophet David Taylor here. Ready for your weekly prophetic word. Uh, thank you for everybody that's joining me live. Let's start with a word of prayer. Lord, we want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you for your mighty miracle power, oh God. We want to thank you for... Uh, the fact that you don't change and that your word is true and that uh, the power is in your word, Lord, and we just want to walk in that power by faith. So I surrender my mind, my heart, my lips, my mouth, my thoughts, my hands, everything to you right now. God, speak to me, use me, I surrender them to the Holy Ghost. Uh, fill me with what you want me to say, that your people might be edified and that you might be glorified and that you might get the glory in all things. We thank you for it, we believe you for it, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all. Amen and amen. Okay, so as usual, I'm going to give you a lot of information, so you're going to have to watch this video more than once. What's my tagline? God already told you what was going to happen if you would just listen to the prophets. Welcome to all my audiences, those that are watching me live on Facebook, on Periscope, and those of you that are watching the replay on YouTube. Uh, please like and share. My goal is to get this a prophetic word to millions of people because whenever God releases a prophetic word or gift it's designed to affect change to a city to a family to a government to a nation to nations to a church okay if you want to sow into my ministry I got a paypal.me link on um, my Facebook live and Periscope profile and my Twitter feed and my Amazon smile uh, my PDT NFP is tax deductible where you find me is always hashtag everything with hashtag PDT and my regular times are, I'm on Sunday afternoon now, this time 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then I'm also on uh, the second Thursday of every month, live at 7 o'clock p.m. with a series called No More Genies, where we get rid of our genie concept of God and get a scriptural basis. Okay? So let's jump right into today's lesson. Now, I have a prophetic word I need to release to you. For thus saith the Lord, for behold, my people, you have heard from the beginning of this year, but from the beginning of 2019, how I was going to bring you to a new level. Yea, that time has come and now is, <clears throat> because now miracles are your normal. Study the scriptures and see the power that I walked in, and that's the power you now walk in. Therefore, I release unto you, my people, a spirit of miracles. I release unto you, my people, a spirit of faith. Let the breath and fire of God blow on you. And as you continue to receive the breath and fire of God, you shall walk in the same power. For when I walked the earth as a man, I did signs, wonders, and miracles. And now I do signs, wonders, and miracles through my body that's empowered by the Holy Spirit that all may know that I am the Lord and I change not. I haven't changed. And my miracles come today through my body. So receive the breath and fire of God. Receive the spirit of miracles, for it's time to make miracles your normal, says the spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. <clears throat> if I could just make you understand what the last 48 hours were like, God has been moving in such a miraculous way, I can't even, if I described it or explained it, I couldn't even do it justice with how much God has moved. I'm talking about just over the weekend, okay? But uh, let's break down that prophetic word. Uh, service this morning at my church was so good. I wish I could, I wish I could just invite the world <laughs> and go back in time and experience that service because it was, it was just, it was just miracle after miracle. Okay. Uh, so when we look at that prophetic word that the Lord just released, you understand that God has been telling us all year long He was going to take us to a new level. Well, that time is now, that time is here, and it's time for the saints to walk in miracles as they're normal. What do I mean by that? It means that the things you see Jesus doing in the Bible, and not just Jesus, but the 12 and the 70 and the 120, all those that followed him, that's supposed to be our normal. When I was a child, I used to read the scriptures and I used to ask myself, how come the stuff I see in the Bible doesn't seem to be happening in the church? It confused me. Okay, and it took a long time for me to understand the answer. And the answer to that question is God didn't change. It's just the people change. Okay? And when you no longer preach and teach 
uh, miracles when you uh, when you just have form and fashion. You have a form of godliness, but you are denying the power thereof. Okay, it's not enough to just talk about the glory of God. It's got to show up. It's got to manifest, and then the miracles of God will manifest in that atmosphere. Okay, when you believe it, when you set the stage for God to move. And the Lord is saying that's supposed to be our normal. That everybody might know, saints and sinners alike, that God didn't change. The same God of the Bible, when Jesus walked to earth as a man, all the stuff he did when he walked to earth, we're still supposed to be doing that now. That was always the plan. That's not above and beyond. Okay, that's supposed to be our normal. Okay. So let's look at a few scriptures. Let's look at Mark chapter 16, verses 17 through 18. Very familiar scriptures. Uh, Matthew, Mark, second book in the New Testament. Okay? Uh, Ma uh, Mark chapter 16, verse 17 through 18. I'm reading out of King James Version. Oh, hey there, Primo. How you doing? God bless you. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Very familiar scripture. What did the Lord say? The Lord say, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Okay? So you're supposed to have signs following if you're a believer. In other words, it's not just supposed to be talk. Okay, you're supposed to have signs, the mark of the Holy Spirit, the mark of the supernatural power of God is supposed to follow you if you're a believer. Okay, and in the name of Jesus, you cast out demons. Now, the church I go to specializes in deliverance. I've discovered that a lot of, of Christians don't believe in deliverance, and I don't understand that. Okay, because the Lord cast out demons from the beginning to the end of his ministry. Okay, so that's why you have to get past your denominationalism and get into what thus saith the Lord. And the Lord, uh, when the Lord's talking about the signs that will follow, the first sign he referenced was deliverance. The first sign that Jesus referenced that would follow those that believe in him was casting out demons. So remember, the title of this prophetic word today is that miracles are, are normal. So if you are a believer in Christ, you're supposed to cast out demons. I just showed you where it said that in the Bible. So you're going to have to get past your denominationalism. You're going to have to get past the traditions of men and learn how to focus on what thus saith the Lord. Then he said, that shall speak, they shall speak with new tongues. And once again, I have met Christians that say they don't believe in speaking in tongues. I don't understand that. 1 Corinthians 14 talks about tongues. Jesus himself here in Mark talks about tongues. Okay. Jesus' mama spoke in tongues. Remember that Mary, Jesus' mom, was in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. And when the Holy Ghost fell, she spoke in tongues. Okay? So speaking in tongues as a believer is normal. That's what we're supposed to do. They shall take up serpents. Now, some people have taken that to the extreme, meaning they go and play with snakes and say if the snake bite them, then, you know, if they're right with God, they won't die. And that's not what the Lord said. Okay? It's talking about that kind of thing that happened with Paul. When Paul uh, was around a campfire at some point, a snake jumped out of the fire and bit him. But instead of, Paul getting, instead of Paul getting sick and instead of him falling down, he just shook it off. That's what that's talking about. Okay? It's not talking about tempting God by going putting yourself in danger on purpose. It says, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. That lines up with the miracle that Elisha did when there was death in the pot. And Elisha put some salt, a little cruise of salt in the food, and got rid of the food poisoning. Okay? That's right. We're not supposed to get food poisoning. And then it says, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Again, that's what Jesus spent three and a half years doing. Opening the eyes of the blind. Healing sick people. This is our normal. Okay? But the time has come for us to walk in that as believers. Okay? Walk in that as believers, because this is our normal. Let's look at another scripture. John chapter 2, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Okay, fourth book in the New Testament, written by the Apostle John. 
Matthew, Mark, Luke, John 2.11, I'm reading out the King James Version, said, This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. If you're not familiar with that, that was where the Lord turned water into wine at the wedding of Cana. That's what's going on in John chapter 2. The Lord was attending a wedding feast, and they ran out of wine, and so the Lord turned water into wine, and it was the best wine they'd ever tasted, okay? But what I want to focus on is verse 11 when it says, This beginning of miracles, there it is again, this beginning of miracles. See, you can't be a believer in Jesus Christ and miracles don't follow your life. That's a contradiction, okay? This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and here it is, and manifested forth his glory. The glory of God has to show up. You can't do it apart from the glory. But when the glory of God shows up, the miracle power of God shows up with it. And his disciples believed on him because the Lord himself said, if you don't believe my words, believe me for the very miracle's sake. You've got to have something to show for your faith if you're a believer. And it's supposed to be signs, wonders, and miracles. Like when you flow in the prophetic, when things are accurate with people that you don't even know people you've never met before, people you've never seen before. And they tell you that they, they, they can't believe, they're amazed at how accurate what you're saying is. You're saying things that, that sometimes they've never even spoken out loud. You know how? Because it's by the Holy Ghost. And that's the sign it's by the Holy Ghost. Because how could that prophetic person know but by the Holy Ghost? Okay? Let's look at another scripture. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews is in the New Testament as well. I'm going to read verses 1 through 4, but we're going to focus just on verse 4. I just want you to get some context. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. Hebrews 2, 1 through 4. For since the message spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord was confirmed to us by those who heard him. Here it is, verse 4. God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. God also testified to his salvation package by signs, wonders, and various miracles. Not just one kind of miracle. Various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit, distributed according to his will. There it is again. So I've given you scripture after scripture after scripture to show you that walking in miracles is normal for the believer. But the Lord has said that now is the time. Now his glory is supposed to manifest because both the saints and the sinners, all the humans on this planet are supposed to know that God doesn't change. Whatever miracles you see God do in the scriptures, in the Bible, he's still able. He didn't change at all. He's still that God. Okay? So what changed was people changed, but that day is over now. Because now we're learning and we have learned, yea, the time now is to bring his glory in the room, walk in his glory, and let the miracle power of God manifest. This is your normal if you're a believer. You're supposed to be speaking in tongues. You're supposed to cast out demons. You're supposed to lay hands on the sick and they recover. You're supposed to be able to bless your food and cast out food poisoning. You're supposed to be able to turn water into wine. And various miracles are supposed to follow you. Apostle Paul had handkerchiefs he would put on his body and they would absorb the healing anointing. And then he would send them to people. And when people got those blessed handkerchiefs, they'd touch their body and be healed. Okay? That is our normal. Okay? So God does not want us to go backward. He wants us to go forward so that the miracle power of God might manifest in the lives of all believers. Okay? Now, me personally, well, I grew up under a prophet. I grew up under a prophet where um, women who couldn't have kids, he laid hands on them and their wombs were opened and, and uh, he would just speak and the Holy Ghost would fall and uh, healing all kinds of sick people getting people baptized with the Holy Ghost. So I grew up under an anointed prophet, okay? But again, that kind of miracle working power is normal. 
But what I was going to say is that this weekend of my life, just the past 48 hours, have been full of miracle after miracle after miracle. Some of which, if I told you, you would just sit there with your mouth open. The way God has manifested this weekend, the way God has manifested prophetically, to have words come out of the mouths of prophets where there's no way, no way we could know what was going on with that person, to have uh, pastors talking about um, financial miracles where people were getting their credit restored instantaneously like that, where people were growing new kidneys, where people were instantaneously losing back pain, where people were being pulled to the new level of faith, where people were getting manifestations, manifestations of the angels of God. And some of that was confirmation for me because I wrote a book about the war in heaven called Lucifer, Soldier, Serpents, and Sin. Okay, and there's a lot of different ranks of angels in my book and a lot of different stuff going on when the war in heaven started. And I got some confirmation this morning about different kinds of angels and how there's an everything angel that's gold covered and how God releases the anointing for us to believe God for anything. When we learn how to walk in his glory, when we believe God, that's how he rewards us. So remember, now, if you pay attention to my videos, this progression has been going on for over a year. I've been telling you for over a year that when the Lord shows up, he shows up like that. When the bridegroom comes, he just shows up. And all those that are ready are moving forward. So all of you that have been being filled with the Holy Ghost for the past year, you're ready for this. You know what I'm talking about. And it's already started to show up in your life. Those of you that haven't been Holy Ghost filled, I probably just sound crazy to you. I probably just sound absolutely crazy, and you don't know what I'm talking about, and that's wrong with you Christian people, and blah, 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 where the bridegroom has come in and shut the door, and we are now in the miracle realm. And if you're not ready for it, oh well, because God is moving mightily. I'm talking about healing people's knees completely. When, when, when they were wore down, there was no cartilage left, and they running up and down the aisle. I'm talking about healing people from stomach infirmities, where they had digestive problems. Right on the spot. Okay? And I'm just talking about in the last week. I'm talking about I saw it with my own eyes. Okay? And then some of those things manifested through me as the Holy Spirit was ministering as I was moving prophetically. Okay? So I'm trying to get you to understand that the time is now, right now. We're in the season of miracles. And so if you've been paying attention for the past year, you've been building your faith. So that now that God has moved and opened the door and pulled everybody up to the next level, you are ready to go. So what does that look like practically? What that means is that exactly what the word says. You're supposed to be able to cast food poisoning out of your food. Say your grace and bless your food and believe to never be sick from your food again. If you have any kind of infirmity anywhere in your body, put your hands on your own infirmity and cast it out and speak healing. Same with anybody else. If you're around anybody and they're sick on any level, put your hands on them, okay? I mean, in terms of, you know, lay hands on the sick, like the scripture said, lay hands on wherever the infirmity is and rebuke it and speak holiness in the name of Jesus and expect their bodies to be 100% whole. Uh, we got a prophetic word this morning about financial miracles. So it's time to believe for financial miracles. Are financial miracles in the Bible? Absolutely. God changed the economy of a nation in one day. Uh, God spoiled uh, Egypt when Moses was leaving with the Hebrews. He spoiled the Egyptians in one day. They left with all the spoils. We're talking about anywhere from 500,000 to 1.2 or 1.5 million people got all of the cash and the, the jewels and the silver cups and all that from the Egyptians. They took it with them. So when the Hebrews left Egypt, they didn't leave empty-handed, if you didn't know that. Okay? Are there financial miracles in the Bible? Yes. The Lord needed to pay his taxes. So he told Peter to go fish in a certain spot, and he pulled up a fish, and there was a coin in the fish's mouth that was enough to pay Jesus' taxes and Peter's. Okay? Are there financial miracles in the Bible? Yes, I just read you one in John chapter 2, where the Lord turned water into wine. Well, you take water and turn it into wine at no charge to the people that were throwing the wedding. Did Jesus do that? The Lord didn't charge him for that wine. Okay, so don't tell me financial miracles aren't in the Bible. Yes, they are over and over and over and over again. So now is the time. So now is the time for you. I'm talking to you personally. Now is the time for you to walk in that level of miracle power. Okay, no more delay. I'm not talking about May. Remember, I told you. Remember, I told you last week 
to get everything together for March because when April hit, God was going to have some new stuff. Remember me saying that? I said that seven days ago. To be sure that your house was in order for March, to be sure that everything God had put on your agenda to do in March, finish it. Because when April came, it was going to be some new stuff. I said that just last week. And here we are in April, and look at how God is moving just in the last 48 hours. Okay? So if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you don't believe none of what I'm saying, then you'll just be left behind. You'll just miss this way. Okay? Just like when it's spouse season. When it's spouse season, God is bringing people together. God is putting marriages together. And if you don't believe that and you miss spouse season, I don't know when it's going to come back again. But I do know that when God is ready to get two people together, to be joined together in marriage, when you're the ones that God has chosen to be together, to be together, it's going to be a supernatural joining. You won't know by the flesh. You'll know by the spirit when you find the right one for you. You see what I mean? They'll be custom designed. They'll be bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. They'll be custom designed to fit with you. See what I mean? And if you don't believe that, then stay single for 20 more years. <laughs> Fine by me, but I believe God in every area. Okay? All right. <clears throat> so uh, let's move on to the next portion. Now, if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen now. If there's anything you want me to pray for, put them on now. We're going to pray the miracle power of God into your life so that the power of God would manifest right now. Okay, not two hours from now, not tomorrow, but right now. Okay, so if you got a uh, prayer request, put them on the screen right now. Okay, okay I don't think I'm seeing any requests. All right, so we're going to move to the portion. Now, I told you, when you see me speak in tongues, I'm asking the Holy Ghost about physical healing, casting out demons, finances, and additional words to release. Okay. Okay, God is saying somebody is being afflicted on their tongue. So in the name of Jesus, I want you to put your hand on your mouth. In the name of Jesus, I want you to say, I speak life to my tongue. I speak wholeness to my tongue. I speak any punctures, any holes, any damage, any dry mouth, any lack of saliva, any tongue tiredness, any muteness in Jesus' name to be gone. We cast it out right now in Jesus' name and we speak wholeness to the tongue. 100% whole is right now that the miracle power of God manifest and let every mute tongue be loosed and let every uh, uh, spirit of dumbness stopping people from speaking and muteness be, rele be released and be cast out and be broken off right now in Jesus' name. And I command that tongue to work and you shall speak and you shall speak normally and you shall speak healthily. And you shall be 100% whole in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Okay, the Holy Ghost is saying ears. Put your hands on the ears. In the name of Jesus, I command 100% hearing in both ears. I command any blockages to come out right now in Jesus' name. And anything hindering you from hearing, it breaks off of you right now in the name of Jesus. And 100% hearing is in both ears. It's yours right now in Jesus' name. Yes, yeah, see, I feel like hear, hearing anointing surging through me as I say it. All right? Okay, the Holy Ghost is telling me to say that the bridegroom is pleased with all those that are ready to go. That all of you that are walking in the miracle power of God, all of you that have built, been building up your faith for the last year, and all of you that made a point to get in sync with God and make sure that you get your business done when the Lord tells you to get your business done, the Holy Ghost is telling me to say to you, congratulations. The bridegroom, Jesus Christ, is pleased. Congratulations. I didn't say that right. The Lord is pleased with where you are and what you've done. <clears throat> so bless God. That means we got a good grade from Jesus. I told you, the Lord gives us our grades now. So we got some good grace from the Lord. So praise God for that. So I'm happy to walk in that. And I'm happy that we're pleasing the Lord. All right. I believe that's it. So uh, again, like I said, go ahead and watch this video as many times as you need to. Check out the scriptures. Uh, listen to other scriptures I mentioned about the financial miracles 
And it's time to walk in that miracle power of God. In seven days, some of you listening to me right now, your whole life is going to be different. This time next Sunday, your whole life is going to be different. Some of you looking at me right now, write it down. In seven days, your whole life is going to be different. Some of you looking at me right now. So be ready. Just like I told you last week, to be sure that you finish March's business. So I'm telling you now, by this time next Sunday, April 14th, your entire life is going to be different. So get ready. Spend this week getting ready and expect the miracle manifestation of God. Thank you so much. God bless you. And I'll see you at my regular time next week. And uh, this is second Thursday coming up. So we're going to have no more genies coming up this Thursday night at 7 o'clock. Okay? Thanks. God bless. Have a miracle Sunday. Amen.